songs you've played, the songs you've sung. For well, summer so much brighter than was winter so much wider when you were young. I hear people talking of the good old days. They say life was much better in so many ways. Please tell me, is that true? Or does time tend to cloud your point of view? Now and then, today and yesterday, was life so different from the life we live today? The songs we sing, the clothes we wear, the things we say, the games we play. Now. Hospital, right in the middle of Hoxton, and years ago it served as the infirmary, and it all also served as a workhouse. And uh, I went to school right opposite St. Leonard's. It was called Hammond Square in those days, but now it's, I think it's called Burbage now. Rose, what was school like when you were at school? Oh, it was it was very disciplined. You know, there's no casualness about it, and the teachers were very strict. And um, most of them were very old, you know. My teacher was about 50 odd, and she was at a home this master away, grey, grey hair, and her name was Miss Jones. And I still remember her for what she was. <laughs> and um, you didn't muck about in those days, you know, you really went to school to learn. I understand what the word means now school. <laughs> well, no one is school. Rose, did, hmm? did you go on school trips like we do now? Uh, yeah, but we didn't go far. We only went as far as Loughton or Chinkford. But to us in those days, it was an excursion because there wasn't much grass about in the street where I lived or any gardens. And uh, I remember one day, we were all going to the zoo. Now, my teacher didn't like me much. I don't know why. Perhaps it wasn't pretty. <laughs> but anyway, we used to go to the theatre a lot and all to see the, you know, the big plays like Shakespearean plays. And I was never chosen right. But when we were going to the zoo, she included me because the whole class had to go. And um, I remember it was um, a bit of a disaster. You know, I asked my mum if I could put on my best hat and coat. And it was something very special because in those days, my mum, you and I had no dad, and my mum splashed out this time to buy me something nice. And it was a mauve velvet coat with like all white embroidery round and it had a scarf attached to the neck, which you just slung round. Anyway, just as we were nearing the zoo, uh, disaster struck. Down came the rain. And it didn't only rain, it pelted down house stones. They were bouncing off the floor, you know, the kind of thing. And it hit our faces, it, it really hurt. And um, I, I looked round and there were all the children were sort of laughing. So I, I touched my face, you know, it was ringing. And then I understood why. All the mud from the hat was running down my face and all my neck was mauve and I really felt real 
all real wreck, you know. What with my lunch, well, my mother cut me some sandwiches, and they were all soaking wet. And eventually, we give them to the animals, but we did end up with a penny bar of chocolate out uh, chocolate machine. What games did you used to play, you know, in them days in school? Uh, well, we used to play um, skipping, and we used to play uh, hopscotch and um, gobs and monsters, you know, where you throw the gob up in the air and it bounces down, and you pick up one, and you do the old four. I think you do it nowadays, but you don't get the monster that yeah, bounces up and jacks. Jacks. Yeah, you call them jacks. Mm, seems like the games they ever know as much, really, have they? that we don't have now? Um, yes, I think we had one, what you don't have now. It's called laundry. Of course, years ago, you know, there was no washing machine years ago and people used to wash their hands. Like, my mother used to take two big bundles of washing like that, come home from work Saturday morning and take two big bundles like that to the washing baths and she would fetch them home all ironed and dry. So that's why we were taught laundry. And every week, you had to take something to wash. I never used to take nothing hard like a shirt, you know, when you got all wrinkles in the car. I generally took a pillowcase, you know, quite simple, fold it over. So one day I forgot to take something, so I said, Miss, I've, I've not got nothing to wash. So she said, don't be dismayed, my child, I've got a few things to spare. <laughs> and she gave me these two bare, big pair of knickers like this. They was <laughs> navy blue. And I felt horrible, I mean. <laughs> so, and as I put them in, they got all soft. It was that material that went all soft and slimy. And I didn't enjoy that one bit. What kind of fashions did you wear when you went out somewhere special? I think we had long clothes all the time then, you know, right down to our ankles. And then uh, during the 30s, the uh, hemline come up and come to the middle of the calf, and it was all them that used to wear the American shoes. There was an American shoe shop down Pimlico Walk. That's in Hoxton. And um, you used to go there and you buy all these fancy shoes like the stars are supposed to wear. I bought a pair of black paint and toes with a white, you know, and a really, you know, lizard skin. And they was all round toes. And it was really fascinating, you know, down Hoxton. You could really get everything you wanted. Did people in them days have gardens like they do now, guys? No, they didn't really. Down the street where I lived, there wasn't one garden like that. The only thing we had was the Espedestas, on the Espedestas stand. But there was all the yards with nothing in, you know, just a dustbin. And the toilets, and there wasn't nothing like there is today. Like today, you go along any street and you'll see, like, in the balconies of the flats, you'll see, like, 
all flowers around the flats and that. But in my days, I don't think people had time for it, really. If you saw that little garden, what a pretty spot you'd cry. It's a picture of a sunny summer's day. With the turnip tops and cabbages, what people doesn't buy. Well, I makes it all a sunny look all gay. Cause the neighbours think I grows them, and you'd fancy you're in Kent. Or to dips them if you gazed into the mews. It's a wonder as the landlord doesn't want to raise the rent. Just because we got such knobby distant views, what views? Cause it really is a very pretty garden. And Chiswick to the westward might be seen. With a ladder and some glasses, you could see to Acne Marshes if it wasn't for the asses in between. Though the gas works isn't violets, they improve the rural scene. And for mountains, I would very nicely pass. With the mushrooms in the dust hole and the cowcumber so green, why, it only wants a bit of hot ass glass. I wear a milkman's nightshirt and I sit sad side all day, like the ploughboy cow what mizzled o'er the lee. And when I comes indoors at nights, they don't know what I says. Cause me language gets as yokel as can be boozy. Cause it really is a very pretty garden. And Amstead to the northwards might be seen. If I had a rope and pulley, I'd enjoy the breeze more fully if it wasn't for the asses in between. We're as country fine as can be with a closed prop for a tree and the mangle makes a rustic little style. Every time the blinking clock strikes, there's a cuckoo sings to me and I've written up to Kentish Town one mile. The dust cup that it seldom comes is just like harvest home, and we mean to rig a dairy up some Put the donkey in the wash house with some imitation horns, and we're teaching him to moo just like a car. Ah, nah. Cause it really is a very pretty garden. And acne to the eastwards might be seen. And by clinging to the chimbley, you could see across to Wembley if it wasn't for the asses in between. If it wasn't for the asses in between. Do you think Hoxton's changed for the best? No, I don't. I think Hoxton has changed for the worse. I think uh, Hoxton's just, you know, liquidated. I don't think they want to put Hoxton back where it was years ago. Because, my, you know, no, you know uh, St. Leonard's Hospital? In there, Nurse Cavell practiced. You've heard of Nurse Cavell? Well, she practiced in St. Leonard's Hospital. And then there was Dr. Parkinson, you know, Parkinson's disease. He lived in number one, Hoxton Square. And Mari Lai came from the back of Hoxton. And I don't think Hoxton should ever be let go because it's a terrible thing when you, you know, walk down there and just see nothing. About a dozen shops. And I think it's disgusting why it's been allowed to go. Rose, was violence as bad as it is now? No, violence yeah. is much worse today. In fact, uh, myself, I never knew of anybody getting killed for a fight at all. And where I live, now in Hoxton Street, I saw a fight. Well, it was fan it was like out of a movie. They come. At, they must have been waiting for this man to come out the pub. They come out the pub and they all jumped out of the car and they're like uh, things that flash. You know, I don't know the name of them. Like the um, scabbard, scabbard, something like that. And they floored him right on the pavement. And um, the people from St Leonard's Hospital had to come along with um, a stretcher just pushed it along the street and saw to him on the pavement with a couple of arc lights. I think violence today has got much worse. 
What kind of shops were there around Oxton? Um, oh, well, it was full of shops, not like today. You know, it's like a ghost town, isn't it, in a movie? Everything's disappeared, and all we've got is wooden holdings and corrugated as iron, you know. That. Oh, but when I was a child in Hoxton, uh, each side of the Hoxton market was full of shops. There was about 101 side. I'm talking about from the park. entertainment like in them days? Oh, it was wonderful. There used to be men dressed up as women, you know, with the big hats and long dresses, and they used to come down shouting their heads off, you know. You heard them from the, when they were down the bottom of the street. And we all used to sit on the curb, and they really used to go to town, you know, cocking their legs up in the air. And then there was the old man with a barrel organ, he used to come round, and um, one of them had a monkey, you know, used to sit on top of the barrel organ. And if we were good, the man used to let us turn the, the number round to the tune we wanted. But, and he used to have a little box in front of the organ where he kept his lantern and that. Uh, did you ever go to the cinema? Oh, yeah, I used to love the cinema. I used to go every Saturday when I was a little girl, you know. I used to go to the Tapney, Tapney and Gainsborough in Kingsham Road, and there used to be serials in those days. And at the time, one time when I first started going, there were silent movies, you know, where the words came on the screen and you used to read them. I think that's why a lot of children took an interest in reading, so they could read what was going on in the cinema. And there used to be the lady playing the piano. And just as the car was going over the cliff, it was to stop, continued next week. Did you ever go to the theatre? Yes, I did. I used to see pantomimes at the Hackney Empire. They used to put on a pantomime every, like, year. And um, I used to come here when I was a little girl and see them the stage turns and um, there was a London musical that was a very well known musical and I used to I remember seeing Swanee River there and there was all Piccaninis on the stage you know I always remember it because I was only about f 14 but it was really a terrific review. Is that musical on today? Oh yes, Do, shall we go and see it? Yeah. A pack of 52 completely ordinary cars. Dora, will you tell me the colour of the top card? Oh, uh, 
Cherry colour. Correct, thank you. And the colour of the next top card? Uh, cherry colour. Black cherries, black cherries, <laughs> yes. Not only, not only the colour, but the name, suit and value of the next card, please. The uh, three of diamonds. And the next one? The ace of spades. And the last? The oh, four of hearts. Fantastic. How does he do it? And uh, Fedora, will you please read my mind and tell me the colour of this piece of silk? Uh, green. I can see you're not quite ready. Uh, green. Fedora is never wrong. I have on this card... <laughs> I have on this card various numbers taken at random between 1 and 5,000. Uh, I must explain that Fedora is very susceptible to the influence of colour and this evening feels able to deal only with the large blue numbers and not the small red ones. I wonder, madam, would you point to one of the blue numbers, please? Thank you very much. In complete silence without a word being spoken, Sidora here will tell that young lady the number that she pointed to. Four! Is that correct? Thank you. <laughs> we'll repeat that experiment. Would you point to one of the blue numbers, please? Thank you very much. Once more, in complete silence, Will you tell that gentleman over there the number he pointed to? Two! Three! Thank you very much. There we are. <laughs> Up to now, we have dealt with things that are here in this room at the present moment. In order to conclude this fantastic demonstration, we are going to step over the threshold into the future. Is there a single gentleman in... Yes, you. What's your first name, please? Peter. Peter. And your last name? Miller. Peter Miller. Zadora, will you please look into the future and tell this young man, Miss Peter Miller, the name of his future wife? Mrs. Peter Miller! Thank you. <laughs> Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen. Now back to entertainment. It's my pleasure once more to reintroduce to you uh, the belle of the Balls Pond Road. The darling of Dalston Junction, none other than your friend of mine engaged this evening at enormous expense. Ladies and gentlemen, Miss Rita Treesburn. <laughs> said to them, now what we're going to do is we're going to have a concert. Anybody here could do anything. And Jimmy put his hand up. Now that's the first time he put his hand up for four years. Well, she never even knew he had muscles in his arms. <laughs> yes, she was so surprised. And she said, well, come on out here, dear, and let's see what you can do. So he came out and she said, what are you going to do for us, Jimmy? And he said, um, I, can, I can imitate a bird. Oh, she said, that's very clever. Let's hear you. So he put his hand in his back trousers pocket and he took out a little tin. He opened the tin and he took out a worm, a big wiggly worm, and he goes backwards like that, see? And he put the worm in his mouth. And... 
until it was gone. Well, you see, there wasn't much of a reaction from all of them there. They were looking a bit horrified, so he took out another long, thin one, like wriggling away, he was wriggling about, and he went right back. Like, <laughs> Done the same thing with that other one. Well, they was all stupefied, just like you are. Yes, they was. Oh, yes. So she said to him, the teacher said to him, is that what you call imitating a bird? And he said, yeah. She said, I think it's disgusting. I think that's absolutely disgusting, isn't it, children? Disgusting. Yeah. So anyway, so she said, we don't want any of that in the concert. Go away. So he still stood there. She said, I've just told you to go away. And he still stood there. So she said, I've just told you. He said, look, he said, I can, I can imitate another bird. <laughs> So she said, we don't want any more of that at all. It's horrible. Go on, hop it. So he flew out through the window. <laughs> now I'm going to tell you about me landlord. When the landlord came for rent on rent day, you should have heard what all the neighbours had to say. A place full of strife. He ran for his life. White House dressed him with a car. Mr. Maestro, because I think some of them are a little bit tired, you see, we'll wake them up. Join me, please. Our house, leave the first house, and the next house is Mr. Waterhouse's house. Waterhouse's house next to our house, and then comes Waterhouse's daughter's house, next door to Waterhouse's daughter's house. There's a picture house of the gas and water house, and in case you want to know, the last is down the road, and everybody's out of that's the work out. Now, you know, Mr. Chairman, some of them had to go. And some of them, very clever here, they sang the whole thing through with their lips closed. <laughs> That's very clever, isn't it? Well, this time we'll have it a bit slower, Mr Maestro, and we'll do it with the actions, eh? Because you don't leave this hall until you've done the actions. Get your hands up. Come on, get them up. Up, up, hold them up, for goodness sake. Up. Ready? All together, please, with feeling. Our house is the worst. 